Okay, with regards to today, um, we're covering the exciting new developments in Oasis PDISP. There are some previous webinars which cover um, a step-by-step -step run through of an analysis in PDISP and setting up things from the start. But um, in this particular webinar, I'm assuming that people are reasonably familiar with the program. What I'm going to talk about is um, each feature in turn. So I'm going to talk about multi-core processing and multi-threading, which makes the analysis much quicker to run um, and gives the user more flexibility. We're going to talk about polygonal loads, which is the major addition um, to this particular upgrade. And what that means is that previously with PDISP, you would model an irregular shaped load by putting squares or circles in there, and the user would spend a lot of time assessing uh, what they should use to represent those polygonal nodes. Now, now that's all done within the program. We've got advanced 3D graphics, uh, including the DXF import. So now, for example, when you look at your settlement outputs, you can look at it in relation to a DXF showing the buildings and surrounding areas. So it's quite good for assessment purposes. Um, you can also look at stress um, contours in 3D. There's an undo redo feature and also a grid tabular output. So I'm going to go into the program and show you these particular features, but the grid tabular output allows you to copy and paste more easily from the tabular output onto, into programs like Excel. So without further ado, let's have a look at how PDS 19.3 is faster and more flexible. So as I mentioned, we've got multi-core processing, and what this means is that the calculations are spread amongst all the processed cores. So um, for the processor, it's much quicker um, and the analysis runs uh, much faster because the calculations are spread um, as opposed to being focused on one specific core. With regards to multi-threading, um, as you can see, um, we've got an analysis in progress screen now and uh, this allows the analysis to be aborted once the task has been started so for example if you change your mind about your analysis um, if you realize that you made a mistake or if your analysis is taking a very long time because it's a very a complex analysis and you, you want to maybe change your displacement data you can do so but more than that, actually, while the analysis is running, the program remains responsive so that data can be inspected whilst the analysis is running and other files can be opened and edited as the analysis proceeds. So I'll just go into the program now and show you a little bit about that. Let's have a look at this here. So as you can see here, we've got a file with a lot of load data, 1,849 loads. So if I look at this in plan, to zoom in on it, but as you can see, we've got a ridiculous number of loads here and um, on that basis if I run the analysis it's going to take a long time because of the amount of loads that we've got but say I change my mind or I just want to review the soil data maybe I just want to check on something I can do so while the analysis is running or maybe I want to look at another file maybe I want to look at another analysis I can do that right now so while that's taking its time I can work on another analysis while we're going in so as you can see, there are quite a lot of options there for that program um, because of the multi-threading and it saves a lot of time and effort as well. So we'll go back into the program. Okay, so moving on with the presentation, I also mentioned that um, now with PDIS 19.3, you can model complex loading geometries or polygonal loads. So as you can see, this is an example and this is what I'm going to demonstrate to you today. Uh, what the polygonal loads, um, uh, what the program allows you to do is it has a wizard and, and this is an image of the wizard here um, and it allows you to input the coordinates of the load and then um, view the squares that the program or the rectangle shapes the program is using to represent the loads. It models a range of geometries and interestingly it can model convex or concave problems. So it's quite flexible. So if I go into the program and demonstrate it so um, I've set up an analysis already we've got the soil profiles in there it's displacement data basic grid but I want to put the load data in there so I'm going to call it hexagonal now there's the option to put the polygonal loads in there I'm going to say that set equals zero meters 
So is it zero meters OD? And there's a, as you can see with the polygons, there's now a wizard here as well. So if I just click on the wizard, I've got to put the coordinates in there. I'm just going to copy and paste from Excel. But as you can imagine, there's a lot of flexibility here now. So for example, if you've got a CAD drawing of a complex space of a building or or you're loading or unloading, what you can do is you can import the coordinates from CAD into Excel or just copy it into a table and then paste it into here. Okay, so as you can see, we've got this now. Um, it's interesting to see how this is represented in terms of rectangles within the program. So um, you can change your tolerance. If you reduce the tolerance, there are a number of rectangles. You can see 193 here. But the problem is it will take a very long time for the analysis to run. If I increase it, there are even less rectangles. And something interesting happens here. So if you're viewing this, you can see that actually the orientation of the rectangles is changing. Now, the reason for the change of alignment of rectangles is because PDISP aligns the rectangles perpendicular to whichever edge so produces the fewest rectangles to achieve the specified overlap tolerance. So what this means is that it's trying to model the shape in the most efficient way. And um, as you increase the tolerance, the orientation can sometimes change, um, as simply as I can put it. Okay, so I'm going to keep this around 10%. Okay, we've got our plane. I, th I think I may have forgotten to put in a loading. So I'm going to say it's a loading of 50 kPa. Okay, so um, that all looks great. If I look at that in plan, you can see that now. Uh, and if I go to analyze, okay. I'll just go for results only. So if I look at that in plan now, I should be able to pull out the contours. There you go. We'll have a look at the fill contours too. So as I've only put the displacement entity as a grid, I'm not going to pull out any graphs on it. I'm just looking at the contours. And if I wanted this in 3D graphics view, that option is there as well. So if I right click or if I go to the settings wizard up here, I can show the displacement data. I can show my Z displacement uh, with the contours here. Okay. So that shows the polygonal loads and it shows really that there's a lot of flexibility with the loads and the user really can better understand what's being used to represent their loads as well. It's worth also mentioning that with the tabular output, you can show you can have a look at the polygonal loads rectangles. So if, if, for example, someone's checking your work and wants to understand how it's represented, we've got the actual coordinates, the specifics of the rectangles here as well. Okay. So going back to the presentation, we've covered polygonal loads. Uh, we've discussed how the program is now faster in analysis. So I'm going to look at the outputs and the advanced 3D graphics options. So as I previously mentioned at the start, uh, you can now import DXFs. And what this means is that in the graphical output, which we had a look at just now, um, you can have a look at these contours in relation, for example, to close by buildings to see whether certain buildings are affected by the contours. And also it's quite useful for reports. It gives very good visual outputs. Uh, but more than that, if you're running a Buzanesque analysis and you've got stresses and strains, you can now contour that in um, the 3D um, graphical output. And you can also set contour limits. So I think, I sl I think you may have briefly seen it, but um, I'm going to go into the program now and show you. Okay, so if we go to the 3D graphics view, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to import a DXF. Okay, so as you can see, this is just a generic DXF that I've pulled up. But if you're really working on a specific analysis file and you knew, for example, that this hexagonal load is going to go around somewhere here, this DXF could be pretty useful. But right now, it's not. It's it's not in the right place. I've just It's just been imported. Um, and you can move it by clicking on background data and right-clicking and translating it. So you can actually translate the DXF. I'm going to translate it minus 190 meters in the x direction, minus 170 meters in the y direction. Okay, and if I go to the 3D graphics view, yep, that looks about right. Okay, 
So if I zoom in on that, you can see that this is around here. And maybe I'm possibly interested in the settlements for some buildings over here. So as you can see now, the contours show really clearly um, in relation to that building. But say I want to put this in the report, uh, a report, and I don't really want these, you know, these extra lines along the side. What I can do is I can also crop the DXF. So if I go to crop, I can choose my minimum X values. So I say minus 120, minus, uh, minus 100, sorry, minus 100. And um, I've got to set the Z above and below um, Z equals zero. Otherwise, it's going to delete the whole DXF. Okay. Oops, sorry. Okay. So if I look at the 3D graphics view now, there you go, we've cropped a little bit outside there, so it doesn't give us spurious information around the side. But as you can see, this is just a quick example, but it does show you the flexibility of the program. Now, if I change the analysis options to Buzinesque because I'm interested in stresses, and rerun the analysis, okay. So if I have a look at this now, what I can do is if I say, um, say for example, I want to have a look at the stresses, I go to the settings wizard, displacement data, and I can now look at stresses. So, and I, as I, you can change the interval as well. So if I want to edit, edit the contouring values, maybe I wanted to have a look every two kilonewtons per meter squared. Okay, there you go. There you go. So as you can see, there are more options now um, in the outputs, and um, and hopefully I've demonstrated that. Okay. Okay. So in terms of easier navigation, um, I briefly mentioned that we've got an undo redo button, uh, which is really useful for tabular outputs, and especially if you're changing your mind or playing around with something. But there's also the tabular outputs in terms of the grid view. Um, I did mention this in that um, with the grid view, you can actually now copy copy cells and you can paste them into Excel. So this just, just gives you more flexibility and saves a little bit of time because what it means is that you don't have to export the tabular output to a CSV and then go through it in Excel, copy and paste. Um, what you can do is just look at your tabular outputs, especially when you're working on a number of files, it saves a lot of time. Copy what you need to do and put it straight into Excel. So if I go to the program again, if I look at the tabular outputs, so I just want the results. Okay, what I can do now is I can go view, open output and grid view, and I can actually just, you know, copy and paste what might be relevant to me. So I might decide just to copy and paste this section here. Maybe I'm just interested in what's happening at point zero minus 100. So I can copy and paste that one line and then I can go and repeat this analysis and every time copy and paste that line. So it just gives me that much more flexibility in terms of uh, in terms of the undo redo button, for example, if I stop this analysis um, and say I want to change this to 20, I can do so. And then, you know, if you change your mind, you can undo it, redo. So the it's, it just makes things quicker and easier when you're running the analysis. Okay, so as I mentioned, you know, I've covered a lot of advanced features of Oasis PDISP. I've um, not necessarily covered how the program works or the basis um, for the analysis or anything like that. So if you are interested in those aspects of PDISP, please uh, download a trial, look at our tutorial manual, and there's a previous webinar giving you a step-by-step -step example showing you how to set up a PDISP analysis from scratch. Um, in terms of the OASIS software, um, please visit our website, email us if you need any assistance, and give us a call. Um, and all, for all those people who are generally using our software, um, you know, please do get in touch if you're using any of these features and need any assistance or want to apply it to your designs. So it just goes for me to say I'm personally very excited about the features that have come up today. I think the political loading will really give users a lot of flexibility. Um, and, you know, if you do have any questions, um, please do get in touch with us.